I'd like to tell you a story about a knight on a chessboard. And this knight is moving around the chessboard in the standard way that knights do, two squares in one direction, one square in another. She's pretty much moving around at random, just seeing where it takes her, but she has an ambition. She'd like to be able to visit every one of the 64 squares on the chessboard without going to any of them more than once. And that's the thing, it's called a knight's tour, and there are loads of ways to do it, billions of them in fact, so you'd think it would be easy for her to find a way, wouldn't you? Well, let's see. So, if there are billions of possible Knights Tours, why is it so hard to find one? Let's have a look at how many ways there are for a Knight to move around the chessboard. If we choose a square to start from, let's say one in the centre, there are eight possible moves from that square. 
From four of those squares, there are seven ways in which you can make your next move, if you ignore the move that takes you back to where you started from. For the other four, there are only five options for the next move, because anything else would take you off the edge of the board. So that's 48 different move sequences already, and we've only visited three squares. These numbers get really big really quickly. The counting gets a bit more complicated when you start to think about symmetry. If one path is a rotation of another, do you count them as two different paths or as the same path? But however you count them, the number of possible move sequences is millions of times bigger than the number of successful tours. When people have found Knight's tours, they haven't done it by making moves at random, they've thought about the problem mathematically. Leonard Euler, for example, who's mentioned in the song, developed a way to find Knight's tours by starting with an incomplete tour and then systematically changing moves until he had one that went all the way around the board. He also made the problem smaller. He found a tour on a 4x8 board and then joined two copies of it together to make a complete tour. And that's how he got a tour with rotational symmetry. But our little knight doesn't know about any of this stuff. She's just making moves at random. To give you an idea of how unlikely it is to find a tour when you're just making moves at random, I wrote some code that generates random moves around the chessboard and keeps going until it gets stuck. I then ran that code one and a half million times. You're looking at its best attempt. It didn't make it to all 64 squares. It didn't make it to 63 squares. The best it did was 62 squares. And to be honest, I wasn't even surprised. But there was something about the results of the simulation that did surprise me. Here's a bar chart of the results. You can see number of moves on the horizontal axis and number of times on the vertical axis. And the bar for 62 squares doesn't even show up at this scale because it happened so few times. But right at the other end, there's a bunch of times that it only managed to visit four squares. And this threw me a bit because I thought you'd always be able to visit at least six or seven before you got boxed in. So I'll leave you with a puzzle. Where would you have to start and what moves would you have to make in order to get boxed in after visiting only four squares? And if you're stuck, take a good look at this picture because I've hidden the answer in there somewhere. <laughs>